Alright, so I'm taping both of the reviews. This is the first one that was given to you last week. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to purposely show you some of the notes I took kind of within it on every page first and then I'm going to just tape page one, page two, page three and I'm going to do the same thing on the next one. Uh, what you can see here for page one, you can see plug in X and Y and in index and Y. Uh, some standard distribute combined like terms here and then on the test you're actually going to have to put it in standard form tell me the leading coefficient and name it by degrees, degrees and number of terms. You'll see this on the second review shortly. Uh, you got some hints here as to what to do, some hints here as to what to do. I'm going to explain that stuff as I go through it. I'm going to show you page two. You can pause this at any moment and write this stuff down obviously from page to page. You can see up at the top here some of the notes I have. Taking the opposite will be over two-way. Happens a lot. Um, and then just other stuff I have written in the margins here as well as down at the bottom of the sheet. Okay, next page. Uh, you didn't have to do 14 obviously. Uh, some of the helpful hints I have here at the top right here. I'm starting to separate those. I actually started working through this problem. I should have slowed down there but I guess I can do that just to kind of get there with a negative one. And some other kind of helpful hints down at the bottom is the quadratic formula. I will be writing that on the board but you better know how to use it. Uh, back to the first page. What you're going to see here is on number two, we need to find for the variable. And there's going to be two separate types of problems like this on the test, which you'll see again on the next review. There's another one where you have to find, I believe, A. Here, so I'm going to plug Y into Y. So I'm going to plug two in right there. I'm going to plug in one, negative one half in for X. And then I'm going to solve it. So one thing you need to remember, first of all, let me go through and solve it is that negative one-half squared means negative one-half times negative one-half. So first thing, you're going to get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. Second thing is you multiply top times top and bottom times bottoms. One over two, or one over four, excuse me, is one-fourth. Now, similarly, when you multiply a number times a fraction, you can just put that over one and multiply top times tops and bottoms times bottoms. So what I get here is two equals negative four over four plus c which of course is, excuse me, 2 equals negative 1 plus C and add 1 to both sides. C is 3. Now what I will ask you to do on the test is to complete the equation. So I don't just want you to find what C is, I also want you to rewrite it. So the final answer here is Y equals negative 4X squared plus 3. Now can you double check to make sure if it works? Sure, if I plug this in I should get well, negative one half squared is one fourth. One fourth of negative four is negative one plus three is two. It works. Okay. Do you have to check it? No, but it's a good way to do it to make sure you got it right. Now, with number three, again, distribute and combine like terms. So let's distribute these outside terms first. This is really a negative one being distributed here. And I get three x squared. Three x times x gives three x squared minus three x minus 2x minus 3 and then combine my like terms so I get 3x squared minus 3x or excuse me minus 5x minus 3 now it's in standard form like this that would be the first part it's not asking you to do it here but it will on the test the leading coefficient is 3 because it's the number in front of the highest exponent and then to name it by number of terms and degree, well I, I'm going to write those up on the next review, but to the second degree is quadratic and three terms is a trinomial. So this is a quadratic trinomial. That would be your three parts that you're going to need to do on the test. This is from 5.1b. If you need to go back and look at those notes on naming them by angle, or excuse me, by degree and by number of terms. For number four, the vertex is found by taking the opposite of b over two a. So in this problem, a is one, b is six, and c is seven. So I'm going to take the opposite of six over two times one. Negative six divided by two is negative three. So my axis of symmetry is always x equals. I'm going to say that over and over and over again. The axis of symmetry is x equals. Well, negative three. That is always the same as that right there and then to find the other one well I just plug it in so I've got negative 3 squared 
plus 6 times negative 3 plus 7. Do the math. This is 9 plus negative 18 plus 7. Negative 9 plus 7 is negative 2. That will give you that value there of your vertex. For the y-intercept, it really is always 0 plug 0 in. Now if I plug 0 in here and here, they go away. You end up with just 7. Now when, if you remember, when it's in standard form, it's always 0 C anyway, but it's always in both cases 0. Plug it in. Now for number 5, this is really easy if you realize that this is in this form. So my h is always the opposite of what's on the inside here, so my vertex is negative 3. And my k is always the same of what's out here, negative 3. My axis symmetry is x equals, and it is always, always, always the x value of the vertex. For the y-intercept, it's always 0. Plug it in. Well, if I plug 0 in here, and go through the math here fairly quickly, 2 times this is 3 squared, which is 9, and 18 minus 3 is how I get 15 right there. There's page 1. Uh, stay tuned for page 2.